I got a big Luxman power amp this time to work on. This is an M2000. It's about uh, 200 watts per channel, I believe. And this one has a fault. Actually, it has two faults. I can determine. The first one you're going to hear right away. And the second one, well, that one showed up while I was testing. Anyway, let's take a look at this beast and see what the problem is. Today we're featuring in Luxman. This is a power amplifier. It's a model M2000. And as you can hear, it clearly doesn't know the words because it's humming. Right channel, the left channel. It's working fine. Right channel also is working, but there's a hum. And I'm running this through my dim bulb so that I'm not drawing excessive current. But uh, when it's turned on, it starts to hum. When the relay kicks in, it won't hum initially. The hum will come up on the right channel. Still in standby here, it shows. Okay. Now we got sound. But the hum will come up after several seconds. It will just start to hum on its own. Sounds like a connection problem. I would say that we have a bad connection inside this unit. Let's rip it apart. A brute like this, the amplifier slides out from the cabinet that comes off the back. This is a dual mono design. This is the channel that's having a problem. So don't need to worry about this one. We're just going to concentrate on this side. As you can see, this is a dual capacitor, right? 10,000 microfarads times 2, 80 volts. So there's three terminals. It's got a common, a positive, and a negative. So there's, this is essentially just two capacitors in here, and there's another two over here. We're going to connect this up to the speaker again and uh, see if we can isolate where the hum is coming from. To give an idea how much this current this unit draws when I switch it on, watch the dim bulb. That's the inrush to charge up the filter caps. Once it's running, it draws, as you can see, very little power. Oh, might help. I got a broken ground, I think, on that on that lead. Yeah, we go. That lead's got a broken ground. Anyway, let's see if we can get this thing to hum. I suspect a, a cracked ground connection somewhere, either on the main amp board or on this board here. Of course, now that it's apart, it probably won't act up. I initially thought those two vertical boards were part of the amp, but they're actually not. The one on the left is the protection circuit, the one on the right is the meter drive. The actual amps are the two vertical boards that are connected directly to the outputs. But we're going to go through it all anyway because this thing's loaded with bad connections. There you go. Now it's not going to act up for me. I'm going to unplug it here. Um, we'll let the, let the uh, capacitor discharge completely. I'm going to pull the board out and we'll just do some visual inspections and see if I can spot anything that is uh, that could be problematic. So we'll check to make sure that everything is discharged, which it is. So now we can pull this board. Yeah, there's a clip down here. We just release this clip and the board should lift right out. Just check this. Could be um, connections on this edge connector. We'll just inspect and clean this up here. We'll use some deoxit on the contacts here. Clean the connectors up, and uh, just look for any any bad connections. From the way this thing initially sounded, it sounds exactly like a grounding problem, which could have been through one of these connections. And when I when I 
tapped it on top it, it came and went so it's got to be a connection problem as opposed to a component problem on this one yeah, as it turns out this is just for the meters so this one's not going to be one that's going to cause a problem but there's a few that look like they might need to be retouched on this one and that's on a cap right there that one You know, there's a couple of connections on here that do look like they might be a little bit flaky. This one here in particular doesn't look to be that well soldered down. I'm going to go over a few of these connections and then we'll put some deoxid onto the contacts. Okay, that card's in place, and it's locked in place now with this clip, so it's not going to go anywhere. Someone's been working in here. These transistors have been replaced at some point. I don't see any connections that jump out and scream that they are poor. I think I'll resolder these regulators down here.
Okay, I'm gonna let this thing run for a while. See if it starts to hum. No noise, it's been running for a few minutes now. Could have been a connection, right? On the, that, uh, the gold connector, the gold plated connectors where they plug into the socket. It could have been that. Because it certainly, it certainly did it when the cover was on and I tapped it. It certainly was humming and then it stopped. And then it came back. It sounds like AC hum, which to me sounds like maybe a ground. Let go. But it's certainly not doing it now. So I'll let this run for a little while longer and fingers crossed it was on one of these boards. Although when I took it apart I couldn't recreate it either, so which is weird. But it um, seems to be working now. And for those of you that think this is a really high powered amp, well, let's just take it off the current limiter. Let's just check the voltage and see what uh, type of voltage these things charge up to. So minus 60 and plus 60 is the voltage. So 120, 124 volts is your rail to rail voltage on this. It's good for I guess about 150 watts and what the power on this thing's rated at. 150, 200, I guess, somewhere in there. Well, it just it just shut down. It just shut down completely after it was running for quite a while there. Full shutdown. Power off. Power on. So something's gone on this amp. It's in, it's in protection. It's gone into protection mode. And when I turn it off, the left meter kicks. So it's gone into into protection. Watch the meter here when I turn off the power. Okay, I guess we'll be uh, doing some more investigating to see what's wrong with this one. Oh, now it comes back on. I, I, I'm just turning off the power when I'm having. Unit. A couple more plugs down here. I fell out of the bottom. 
backed up again so I can make some measurements. The fact that this thing uh, cut out like it did, I think I want to just pull amplifier modules out and inspect the individual boards. They unplug, right? There's a couple plugs that go in to hold them in place here. And um, there's a couple screws in the back I can pop out of this and remove this entire module. I'm going to start with the right channel, which is this one, because this is the one that was humming before. So likely if there's a fault on the amp module, it's going to be on this one. What I think, anyway. So four screws and the module will lift out. Just get a plug to undo here. Undo that pl power plug. Undo this cover. And unplug that wire and then I can examine this board away from the amplifier itself, away from the power supply. Being a dual mono design, just unplug. Now we can check the amp module out. Now there's a few problems with these modular designs like this and that's because they use uh, plugs and plugs always are a source of failure. That's uh, one of the places that we see the highest failure rate is on interconnects where one board plugs into another. You get intermittent connections on sometimes on these connectors and that can cause the amp to go out of balance and go into a protection mode. I just want to give this a good inspection and it could be a bad transistor on here too. The way that that thing shut down like that it could very well be a bad transistor but the way it was humming sounded like a bad ground when it was humming before so this is the preamp. I think those other two boards that I was looking at, like the plug-in boards, one of them I think is the power meter driver and the other one is the protection circuit. So these are the amp boards. The preamp comes right into here, right? And uh, and then from there, it, this is the preamp uh, board and drivers and then these are the outputs. It would be drivers and then the power outputs on here, right? You got driver here, two outputs, and then another driver over here and then two outputs on this side. I'm just going to clean out the rosin that's between the uh, some of the pins here from, from the previous soldering. Rosin is usually not conductive but it certainly can uh, it certainly can go conductive especially if it's contaminated get a bit of leakage and it can cause all kinds of weird things to happen. <sighs> these big pins here on these uh, connectors, power pins here, uh, these ones always concern me as uh, a potential cause of intermittent problems that in connections. Just looking to see if I see any cracked connections on any of the components here. So far it looks pretty good. Might go over a couple of them just to make sure. Since this is an intermittent problem, I'm going to probably have to test this thing for a while. Because whenever you have an intermittent, you just don't know. As long as it's running, you don't know whether you got it. it tells us on the board which is the NPN and the PNP side.
these old type transistors here, these give us trouble. The early solid state amps were not that reliable. Just they, they hadn't perfected a lot of the semiconductors back in those days and transistors failed at a much higher rate than they do today. I am going to go over both of these boards and just I'm going to inspect them one at a time. And I say there's a, there's a few connections on here that I think I'll redo. I will redo the, the, the connectors, the pins for the plugs. I'll redo those just because. And I'm going to look at the look on the other boards here. I'm not going to pull the transistors out though. Pull the boards. I'm just going to try it. Well, I might have to pull the boards. I'll, I'll see what I see. Let's go over this. I mean, this thing just behave, it's behaving like a bad connection. So this is one of the two output boards. We do the connections here on the input plug. A lot of times we get into these amplifiers that use these plugs, uh, connections become the number one problem.
problem. I remember when I was in, I think it was junior high, played in the band, and we had this band teacher who was uh, a drill sergeant. And uh, so that he could shout over everybody, because you had a bunch of kids that didn't know how to play anything, right? Make more noise than uh, anything else. And he had a PA system. A microphone at his desk and he would yell at people over the PA system and uh, every so often the PA amplifier would crap out I think it was an old Sun commercial amp anyway uh, he had just a power head sitting on top of a couple speakers a microphone plugged into it so he could he could yell at everybody and every so often this thing would go down and I remember one time <clears throat> in the class, a guy comes out from the manufacturer. He pulls the amplifier apart, just unplugs all the cards and plugs them all back in and then leaves. And that was all it took to fix it. So when you get uh, these interconnect plugs like this, interconnect plugs cause more issues than pretty much anything else. Remember when the Zenith TVs were around the old Chroma Color 2 that had all the little modules. And nine times out of ten, when it wasn't working, it was just a it wasn't a blown module, it was just a connection between the mo module and the main chassis. So we would uh, we would undo all the plugs, undo all the modules, tighten up the little spring contacts, uh, put them back together, set them away, and it worked fine for a while work fine for another couple of years and then they'd be back for another problem. So I've just gone over this module and I'm going to do the same with the other one. I'll just plug the, the input back in and we'll plug this module back in. Let's just go in. This goes in which way? This way. It goes this side up. It's going to get the audio cable fished back through here and plugged in and then get that shield cover on top. I'm going to do the same on the other board. I'm going to pull the left channel out as well. Go over it. Just take a close look at it. And then put it back in. And then uh, we'll fire this one up and run some more tests. Nice thing about modular designs like this was that they were relatively easy to service. You could just pop the modules out and very easy to service design of amplifier. Unlike some brands that start with Yama and end with Ha. Okay, now we pull the other amp out. We'll check the other board. This one's been serviced before. I know that because the screw that holds down the, the top shield over the input, there's two different types of screws on there. So this one has been serviced before. And whoever put it together used different screws. So it'll be interesting to see if this one's got anything different, how it looks any different than the other one. Oh yeah, yeah, this one's had a fair bit of work done on Check this out, there's been resistors stuck on the bottom on this one. And a lot of soldering done on this, on the plugs here. Let's just pull this board out and get a closer look at the board itself.
look right here. That one's moving. Well, I'm going to go over this board. For one, that connection there is, you can see this one right here. I shouldn't be doing that. I don't know whether it's cracked underneath or whether it's just the, the trace is lifting. It could be the trace is lifting because somebody's been applying a lot of heat to this board in the past. But it still, still shouldn't be moving like that. <clears throat> just make sure that it's good. So listening to the radio today and they were talking about protesters. We got some radical protesters going on here that uh, think that uh, it's okay to block the freeways and shut the freeways and shut the ferries down and stuff to stop people from going to work because they have a political agenda. They don't really agree with something that the government has done. And in this case, it's, re it's revolving around logging and for those that aren't familiar with what's been going on here, the the provincial government has basically signed off on native treaties with the First Nations to give them some self-governance on their own land. And if the natives decide that they want to log the trees that are on their land, they have a right to do so. But the protesters don't feel that that's, you know, the tree huggers, basically, they don't feel that that's, that's right, that they should have the right to, to do what they please with their land. So they put up all these protests and block bridges and block tunnels and stuff and just generally piss everybody off, just trying to go to work and earn a living. Well, this morning some clown decides he's going to take a perch up on a ladder and block traffic, and well, someone didn't like it, and they knock the ladder over with the protester on it and the guy went to the hospital with a broken pelvis so and maybe that'll teach him right he'll be limping around for the rest of his life it's one thing to, for these guys to protest peacefully at the side of the highway hold up their signs but when they start to crazy glue themselves down to the pavement or lock themselves by putting a bicycle uh, lock around their neck and locking themselves to a steering wheel of a car that they park on the road it's uh, getting a little bit more militant and uh, let's just say some people have a little some people have a short fuse and don't appreciate it especially when it happens every single day and people are just trying to go to work and uh, I can understand why people are frustrated because I'm sure there's not too many bosses that are uh, you know 
okay with someone coming in to work hours late because some clowns have decided to block the uh, the road. I know of a few people and a few bosses that I have dealt with in the past that would just say, you know what, take the day off without pay. I dealt with a boss that was like that. If you were a minute late for work, it was just, yeah, just take the day off without pay. And unfortunately, there are a few of those around. Yeah, these connections here look pretty, some of these ones look pretty flaky, like this one here too. So, we'll go over this board. This is the left channel, which is not the one that was humming, but when it did go into a shutdown state, this is the one that the power meter did the little dance when I turned off the power. This is actually an amplifier I'm repairing for uh, a fellow that I've done some work for in the past, and uh, uh, he, he got a really good deal on this amplifier, from what I understand, but it wasn't working. So I've got a few of his amps to work on over the next little bit, and I've had some of his other stuff in the last batch of stuff, some, some nice gear. And this Luxman uh, power amp would be one that would be welcome in my system because I just happen to like uh, Luxman equipment. When it works, it sounds fantastic. See somebody else in the past has already resoldered a lot of these, a lot of these pins here. These was these would have already been redone. I'm doing them again, but somebody's done this in the past because it, it probably had a fault. That's the the problem with these type of connectors is that uh, they are notorious for going intermittent. Because they're such a big, uh, heavy conductor. A lot of times when they were put together, uh, they just weren't heated hot enough at the factory to uh, provide a good mechanical and electrical connection. And just after years, they uh, sometimes let go. Now, with, resp with respect to my comments about the, the protester getting thrown off the ladder, no, I don't agree that it's okay to cause someone bodily harm, but some of these guys have to think before they, before they act, because not everybody is going to be sympathetic to their cause, and when you're disrupting someone's livelihood, in this case, I, you know, truck drivers, for example, um, that, you know... Time is money. When you're disrupting someone's livelihood, it's um, it can certainly uh, create a lot of uh, stress and a lot have lost their patience with them.
Okay, I'm going to take a look at the other driver boards as well. Let's see if these need to be cleaned up. This is one of the output boards. If you may, go over a few of the connections on here as well. They look like they could um, do a touching up here. Looks like somebody's already done some of them. But some of the other ones certainly uh, look could be a bit flaky here. Soldering is pretty easy on these boards because they were originally done with leaded solder. Now uh, this lead free crap which is too old for lead free. don't need to replace the heat sink compound on here because I'm not actually going to remove the transistors. I'm just removing the screws and then I'll unplug the board from the bottom of it without disturbing the, the heat sink or the insulator IC. Right, I just pop the board off from the bottom so I can inspect it. Oh yeah, this one here. That screw where it's soldered down for that other transistor there. How is it? Is it is it good or uh, maybe not? It moves. See that? This is a, this is the connection to the collector on this transistor. This one here doesn't look like it's soldered down as well as the other ones do. And if I put my screwdriver on there, it moves. So. That definitely needs to be soldered down a little better, for sure. Again, it looks like somebody's gone over these ones. The other board certainly had a lot more uh, uh, components that somebody had already gone over. This one here, not as much. Just looks like just this. That needs to be gone over.
cool down and that should make a very good connection to that screw. for the driver. Once I finish doing all these connections, I'm just going to put this thing back together and and uh, let it run. Well, I probably won't put the top cover on it, but I'll put the boards back in, hook it up, and I'm going to let it run. And if it can run fine for several hours, then um, we will assume that the unit is, is repaired. Because when I first started on it, it was either, well, it hummed initially, and then once I started on it, that's when it went into shutdown on one channel, or I should say shut down, and the one meter kind of bounced when I turned off the power. I just noticed something about this unit that I didn't notice before. This is the Japanese unit. AC 100 volts at 50 or 60 hertz. Hmm. This is a 100 volt version, not a 120. Maybe that's part of the problem. Running it at 120 as opposed to 100 volts could certainly uh, cause some issues now, couldn't it? Although it says Ontario Hydro Electrical Approval, but on the back here it's clearly labeled AC 100 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. But it's got the special, it's got the special approval. I don't know if you guys can read the voltage there, but there's the voltage right there. 
got the Ontario hydroelectrical approval. But according to the the label, it's a 100 volt version. But we're going to run it at 120 because you know that's what we run here is 120. So I'll plug the audio input back in and we'll put that shield on and then test this thing. See what I mean about the two different screws though, right? The other ones are all black. This one had one gold colored screw over here on this side to hold that shield in place. And that's a ground fixing screw, but it still should be grounding through it, not a problem. Okay, let's uh, power this thing up and see if it works. Well, we'll power it up on the dim bulb first, just to make sure there's no no faults, and then I'll bring it up on full power. So power up on dim bulb, and the amp should go out of protection. And we should get sound momentarily. There we go. Okay. I'm going to uh, let this thing run. It's the lowest it can go. That's the first setting. I guess I can shut the volume down here on my... I can lower my output from my MP3 player just so I don't have to have it blasting because... Whoops, because it is quite loud. Even at that level. Okay, so we'll let this thing play. I'm going to put it on full power. So now we're on full 120 volts. We'll let this thing run and uh, see if it continues to run. I'm going to measure my AC voltage to make sure my variac is actually set for 120. 117. Okay, we'll just bring it up to 120. There you go. 120 volts. So, let this thing run. We'll see how it performs. So, this is our time. We started this a couple minutes ago. I started about two minutes ago, I guess, three minutes ago. So, we'll see how long. I'm going to go have my dinner. We'll leave this thing running. If this thing's still running when I finish my dinner, then uh, I'm sure it's ready to go back together and be tested some more once it's put together. Still going. I think we may have the problem solved. Well, this unit is still working, so under full power, so I think I'm going to put it together and we'll test it some more. Okay. is all back together I'm gonna to run this for a while but I'm pretty confident that it's fine I guess time will tell I'll leave it run for another hour or so but uh, that's it for this one we'll catch you in the next one thanks for watching